Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices. Welcome to my desk. Today we're going to be setting up a neat little application to close your garage door automatically. Now, we came up with this idea a while back. Um, I don't know if this has ever happened to you. Um, you get up in the morning and you get ready and you get in the vehicle and you drive to work. And you get about halfway there and you think to yourself, did I close the garage door on my way out? And that will just nag on you all day long, wondering if you close that garage door. Um, I know it's happened to me, and I commute 30 minutes. Um, and by the time I realized it, you know, I'm, I'm 20 minutes into my drive, and I'd have been 40 minutes late for work, and Ryan would have just killed me for that. So, so going back and shutting the garage door, making sure it was shut, wasn't an option. So I just kind of had to let it nag at me all day until I got home, and... Uh, found that I had closed the garage door, so false alarm, but I think that this is probably happening to more people than just me, and that's what this whole application's about. In this application, you can open your garage door and pull out and leave, and then about, you know, three or four, five, however long you want, a little while later, the garage door is going to close on its own after being open for so long. It's going to automatically close. Now, I don't know why they don't let you do this with the garage doors. Um, I don't know why this isn't a standard feature. I think it's a great idea, but that's all right. They don't have to do it because we can do it ourselves. And we can do it pretty cheap, too. All we need is a key fob or reactor controller with one relay. Um, you can use one with eight relays or four relays or whatever, but all that is required is a single relay reactor or key fob board. Okay, that's it. Um, so basically, any reactor or key fob board you can imagine will work. Um, other than maybe one of the solid state boards, that might not work because we're just generating contact closure. Um, so I'd stay away from those, but anything else would be fine. So you'll need this board. You'll need a magnetic detection sensor. This one's real nice. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to mount this to the jam where the garage door comes down. And we're going to actually mount this piece on the garage door itself. So when the garage door goes up, this moves up with the garage door. And whenever it comes down, it comes down next to this. What happens with this sensor is whenever it detects a magnet, which is all that this is, it generates a contact closure out these two wires. Whenever that uh, magnet is taken away from it, no contact closure is detected on these wires. So we can use that contact closure to trigger our reactor controller. All right? So that's a magnetic sensor you need. And then you're just going to need a wire jumper. Um, for the single channel controllers, two channel controllers, and four relay controllers, I highly recommend this little, uh, this little jumper pack. Um, these things are real nice. They've got these little metal ends on them. And if you look at these spring-loaded connections, uh, you can't fit a very big wire in there. And these have really small ends on them, so they plug in there just absolutely perfect. So definitely get yourself a pack of these. They're really handy. You're going to use them a lot. I happen to have one here that's already open. Um, so let's go ahead and wire this up, and let's talk about how it works. Now... I'm going to take this jumper here, this little jumper wire, and I'm going to put it between input 1 and input 2. Okay? Just jumper those two uh, inputs together, basically. So what happens on one of them happens on the other one. And that's all there is to that. Now I'm going to take my magnetic sensor, and I'm going to attach it to input 1, and ground. Pretty simple stuff. And with these little uh, spring-loaded clips, this is a it really only takes a couple seconds to wire this thing up. Okay, got everything in there. All right. I'll go ahead and plug this in here. Make sure I've got everything in there good. That looks like I do. 
Okay, now let's talk about how this works through the configuration uh, utility. Now, I already have the configuration on this page. All you need to do is click on it and download it. You can download it to your desktop, open up the configuration utility, and uh, go ahead and attach your controller to your computer, whether that be USB or wireless, depending on which type of controller you have. Get your configuration utility up and click uh, load configuration from file. And you'll just grab that configuration file that you downloaded from the site. It'll load it in there and, uh, and that's basically it. Uh, for more information on that, um, check out part five of our reactor logic series where we explain the configuration utility. Now, once you've got that loaded in there, you can look through it and um, see exactly how we ever have everything configured. And that'll kind of help you understand how this works. Now, with input one and two jumpered together, we, can, we have two inputs at our disposal. Now, what's happening here is whenever this contact closure is broken, a timer starts immediately. And at the end of that timer, a second timer starts, which turns the relay on for a second. A momentary contact closure, because that's all the garage door needs. So, we trip input one, which starts timer one. Timer one runs for whatever period you want. Um, you'll just change the length of timer one in the configuration file. And it'll come on for however long you want. And then at the end of that, it'll start timer two, which turns on the relay for a second to trigger the garage door opener. And, uh, you know, that's really all there is to it. Um, really pretty, pretty simple stuff. And with all the uh, utilities you've got on this application page, schematics, pictures, um, the configuration file, if you want to change how long your garage door opens, uh, garage door stays open before it closes, just get on there and click on uh, timer one and change that duration to however long you want. You can make it five hours if you want. Um, so really very simple. And if you're out in the garage one day and you're working, um, you can connect to the controller and disable that relay or you can just unplug the controller. Doesn't really matter. Um, and this thing's really going to save you, it's going to save you a headache one of these days. I guarantee it. If you install this, one of these days it's going to save you from having a headache all day long. And you don't have to close your garage door at all when you leave in the morning if you don't want to. I don't anymore. What's the point? It's going to shut up for me. So um, that's basically it. Now we're going to run out to the house and actually show you this thing working. And... Uh, you'll really actually get to see this thing in, in the real world actually doing something that's actually really useful. So um, we're going to head out there now and I hope you'll join us.